I guess. Howdy, cave dweller. I thought I was streaming. And you missed some great stories. And look how much time you missed. Like 15 minutes, according to the clock. We're 15 minutes through, and we're at the 15 minute point, the point where I talk about current events. So what's going on in current events right now? It's raining out, and it's beautiful outside. It smells like the smell of rain. It is the smell of rain out there. And I gotta tell you, there's only one smell as great as the smell of rain, and that's the smell of hot cement, or hot asphalt. I love those two smells, my favorite smells. If I could get an essential oil that smelled like hot rain on the cement, I would wear it every day. Or at least keep it in my pocket so I could smell it anytime I wanted in the winter. Cave Dweller, I'm just wearing these panels, and you missed my whole complaint about litter in Milwaukee. And how, here, this is what they look like. Hispanic community, stop littering, basically. It says stop throwing trash in the street and pick up after yourself, you half-wit. I don't know what it is, but in all the poor areas of cities, or, you know, I, can't, I don't even think you can say poor areas, because just areas that aren't wealthy. People throw junk in the street all the time. I hate it. Why do you do that? Why do you just throw junk in the street? Every cigarette butt in the gutter makes the world that much worse. Ten people think, oh, it's no big deal. It's just a cigarette butt. The cigarette butt doesn't deteriorate. That's not biodegradable. It just looks worse and worse and worse with time. Ten people think that, that's ten cigarette butts. A hundred people think that, that's a hundred cigarette butts. That's the size of a manhole cover. Just scattered about for birds to make nests out of. Do you want your birds in your neighborhood smelling like nicotine and lipstick? Come on, people. I'm telling you. So, the city of Milwaukee, these are like uh, retail uh, signs, where you, retail for sale signs where you stick them in the dirt. They had those things on them. And they put them in front of St. Patrick's, church where I work, and the wind coming down and away from St. Patrick's, down and away, pushed these down. So they were perpetually at this angle and flapping. And they were at this angle because the wire rack thing that they're stuck on was actually bent. They couldn't stand up straight. And I did my best to make them stand up straight. I forced them, make it a little spring out of the rack against a light post so that they were tight against the light post. Now nope, the wind coming off the church still blew them down. So I just took them. I'm like, City of Milwaukee, you're fighting litter with litter. There's no way in hell you were ever going to come by and retrieve these signs. Like for next year or when your advertising campaign was done, gather them up and recycle them. No, no, you're just going to let them sit there for some poor slob like the Scrouse to come and take. Because I have a civic duty. I'm also being paid to pick up litter outside St. Patrick's Church. I pick up litter because litter bugs put it down. Why do litter bugs exist? I mean, do you just like spit on your rug in your house? Do you spit you know, wads of gum? And, although I take exception with wads of gum, I feel like it's like a natural adhesive that has a protective barrier on the sidewalk when enough people step on it. But other things like beer tabs and used condoms, do you just throw that around your house and just let them sit there and lie? Well, maybe some people do. We are talking about Americans. And I've seen the Walmart pictures, so I know how terrifying that can be. This is possibly the most boring part for you. Well, maybe it's not, because you actually see things happen. Look, it's changing colors. When I'm painting on a regular painting, you probably don't notice that it's changing colors. You're just like, he keeps dabbing it, but nothing's happening. That's exactly how I feel. And that's why I love stretching canvas and making prepping surfaces gives me a sense of satisfaction. I can get it done quick, knock it out, I know the steps, and when it's done, it's done, and it's obviously done. With a painting that I'm dabbing at, and fixing and correcting and breaking and fixing and breaking and wrecking and correcting, I never know when it's done. I just have to call it, call it truce at some point. Right now, if you see this painting right here, I'm virtually done with this. All I need to do is a few things in the background or with the, there's some star shapes in here. 
The star shapes in indicate x-ray vision on that side, and on this side they indicate uh, simultaneous narrative. Somebody that's not in the setting, he's making a phone call. So I have to touch those up a little, but the thing that holds me up the most is getting the walls right. The walls aren't right. I'm obsessed with these walls. I was looking at a painting I did in 09 where I was obsessed with the walls too, but I was not this obsessed. I just like went over them a couple times and I was like, okay, good enough. And they don't look that great. They're almost straight out of the tube colors. And even though I had discovered gray by that point, they were still not, they were still very brightly hued. They were very saturated. I was surprised. But I sent them into the contest anyway. Sent that painting into the contest anyway. I mean, I figured why not? It was a painting I liked, even though it, it was the walls weren't right. But I, I worked hard on those walls, but not nearly as hard as I worked on the walls that I just showed you. And the point is, the walls, the most, the background, the most boring part of the painting. Who cares? Just get out the beige. No, I gotta work them and work them and work them, and I don't know why I'm doing it. Cave dweller, let me tell you about Toastmasters. Toastmasters is a club. It's actually, hey, we have a guest. No, she's making a phone call. Toastmasters is a place where you can go and practice public speaking. And one of the aspects of Toastmasters is a thing called table topics. And in table topics, you just extemporaneously speak for one to two minutes on whatever subject they give you. And I excel at this. I don't, I'm, you know, I'm not bragging. I just do. It's my natural talent. Why do I have a natural talent at extemporaneous public speaking? It's practically useless. And it's, I can, it's never for a purpose. You know, it's not like I could, ex unless there's something that I know something about intimately. Like, for instance, I could extemporaneously paint a, or speak about painting. But extemporaneously speaking about current events or the weather or whatever topic these people bring up, because you're assigned the topic by another Toastmaster at the meeting. And I am often called on, if not always, and I love it. And I'm good at it, and I, I feel that awesomeness charge. You know, when you're good at something and you just kill it, and you love it because you know you're competent? Oh man, it's like the only thing I'm competent in. I just, I wish I could get a job doing that. So if you know of any jobs where you just extemporaneously speak, count me in, give me your number, and then give them my number, and then connect us on Facebook. Because I'm telling you, if I could just get a job doing that, it would be the best. So anyway, Toastmasters has a world, uh, best. it has a world series, it has a best speech in the world contest. And I hate these best in the world speeches from Toastmasters because they're always like schmaltzy. They're always schmaltzy um, uh, self-help or schmaltzy can't we just get along kind of things. And oh, look what I got. I got a laser pointer. So this, th you can't see the whole painting. Right. This is a painting. And you see, this is a laser pointer pointing at the painting. And now we're letting this dry. This is gesso on here. Don't look at my hand. Look at that dot. That dot. Yeah, okay, well, it's not that great. I thought it would be great. I thought it would be worth something. Uh, I don't want to bump into these on accident now, so I'm going to put them in the window. Uh, I can't put them in the window. I'm going to put this one here. And I'm going to put this one. On top of these records. Give the dweller. The, oh, that's such a beautiful record cover. I don't. Yeah, that's just that's plain. That doesn't. That one doesn't matter. Got a black album cover here. It's not the black album. It's just black. Now this one, 
I'll put backwards behind the easel. Uh, that's probably been my best idea in the world so far today. Okay, Kel Cape Dweller, now you'll notice you're looking at a, a, a painting turned around backwards. So let's turn it around back to the frontwards. This is the big old face guy. This is the peg leg monkey. This is the skunk man. They are together again for the first time. Together again for the first time because you know, don't, know, know, don't know what's happening in time. Time is zany. Speaking of, you know, I have literally painted nothing this episode of Scrouse Live. And we're 30 minutes in. 15 of which you weren't part of because I didn't hit start stream. I have a new jar here of magic sauce. It came in the mail a few weeks ago. Or I mean, a few days ago. Last week sometime. Magic sauce. So this is my magic sauce bottle. This is my new bottle of magic sauce. And I pour this magic sauce into this magic sauce because this has a squirt tip. So my point, Cape Honor, is that... I'm just extemporaneously speaking. And this is about how it goes when I extemporaneously speak in Toastmasters. <laughs> if I would go on for long, a long time, it would just meander. The two minute thing really keeps me out focused. <sighs> so here we are. And there you are. And here I am. This is supposed to be light, but it looks like a projection from the table. I am really having a hard time with this floor. And it's not even a wall. I'm having a hard time with the walls. Oh, you know what I was going to do with the walls? I found a sauce at my house that is wonderful. It's called uh, Fluid Acrylics, made by no name brand. And it's semi-transparent. It's sap green. So I was, going, I was just going to go over all the walls with the sap green and tie them together. Maybe not. Maybe that won't happen. I don't know. Because, I, I mean, it won't happen today, that's for sure. I didn't bring the tube. It's on top of my sink. Amongst the many things on my windowsill above my sink, tube of sap green, a syringe with a flexible tube, some potted apple trees that I grew from a seed, seedlings, actually, still, in cups. Uh, what else is up there? The syringe, oh, the ink that I use, the syringe, I suck it out of the ink bottle into the syringe and then blow it into a pen. A syringe works really good for that. So if you find, like, on the street, like I do outside St. Patrick's, diabetic needles, I take them and I wash them off thoroughly, squirt vinegar through them, and then I dry them out and I use them for ink because the needles wear out. It's not the needle that wears out. I mean, you don't want to break it, but the, the suction gets wonky. Anyway, here we go. Yeah, that's what we're, that's the color we're talking about. That looks like light. Now all I have to do is wipe off where it's not. Easier said than done. Easier said than doing it. Yeah, that's me. That's the scrouse. I talk big talk, but can I actually do anything? Alright, that's not bad. Good enough. I'm getting paint all over me. This rag is too non-absorbent. Oh, and I just put my thing... I just put my palette knife in the paint. It gets everywhere. And I'm wearing super nice pants. I hope I don't blow it. These are super nice pants that I just bought. They're like a lot of money. Like 12 bucks. And I don't want to wreck them right away. I want to wreck them never, is what I'm trying to say. All right, Cave Dwellers, it's that time of the episode again. We are here. We're at the halfway point. That means we're going to talk about anime. Anime, my new obsession. So, in the last five days since we've last talked, I've obsessed over 
finishing the anime Parasite and another anime, a Netflix special, which is called Revisions. And I started a third one, which is, I don't know what it's called. It's about a war of magicians. It's fairly interesting. The ideas are uh, revealed a little bit at a time. The characters are interesting. And the ideas are interesting. Apparently, in this one that I can't remember the name of, the magi there's a war, and it's always with kids. Kids are always the star. So this high school student is a magician, and she calls out a servidor uh, to that she, she's its master, and he's a he's a she calls him archer because he's a bowman. But he doesn't. In his first fight, he uses swords two at once and the saberman that he goes up against is like oh double saber so that's interesting we don't know who this mysterious character is the idea that his master and servant relationship she calls him forth she's a magician in high school parents are gone or dead or something I don't know I'm not sure what's going on it's, I only saw two episodes and the first episode was her perspective this, which was episode zero and the next episode episode one was the main character's perspective, who got killed and she brought him back to life, but he doesn't know it. Fairly interesting. I'm going to keep watching it. Parasite is about what is it to be a human and what is it to be a part of an ecosystem as a life form? And why, why do humans want to dominate and kill everything? What happens if something comes that is a higher in the food chain than humans, that actively hunts and devours humans? And uh, this boy has a parasite. That, the parasite goes for the head and takes over the brain. He stopped it, and so it only took over his arm. So he has this plastic arm that emits blades, and a little guy named Migi that talks to him. Has an eyeball and sometimes a mouth. This water reeks. But it's sweet as a baby's bottom. It ends really great. He fights against a super parasite who has uh, parasites on all his limbs, including his head. And then he's armored up his body so he's impenetrable because the parasite can turn harder than steel or be malleable like putty. So it's another story about a child becoming a man. It's the Bill Dung's Roman. Uh, almost all anime or Bill Dung's Roman. I, it's hard in America to find anything that's not that genre. That's Parasite. I finished that. It, the manga is better, I think, but the anime is pretty good. Now, the Revisions is the Netflix original, and it's about a bunch of kids. One kid thinks he has a destiny to protect all the others, and all the others are like, well, you shut up about it already. And he's really annoying. And then finally it happens, and their section of Tokyo is transported to the future, and some monsters attack. Somebody shows up and gives him a mobile suit, a mecha, and he goes around and he's like, causing mayhem. And for the whole series, he's like, it's my destiny to protect everybody, I'm the leader, and I'm the boss, and it just causes everybody to hate him even more, and there's fallout. And it sounds like it could get really annoying, but it's never annoying, it's just... It, it's enough to be suspenseful. Like, come on, will you get it together? All the characters are lovable. There's some stock characters in there. There's Here's some stock characters I've noticed in anime. There's the austere guy with the glasses. There's the cute girl with the glasses who's, like, studious or ditzy. And there's... Those are the main two that stand out. The other ones are more malleable, but it's that glasses that make those two stand out. Anyway... Ditsy girl with the glasses was in there. Otherwise, it was well done. It had a really great twist at the end and some ideas about time and moving through time that were fairly interesting. And then the resolution was unexpected and fascinating. And there were some hard choices that had to be made by the character, and he made them, and there were losses, real losses, and the real effects, uh, consequences to choices. It just worked out really well. I recommend revisions. And the best part is the opening theme song. Oh my goodness. 
every time I went to next episode, I watched that opening theme song because it was so great. And the opening, uh, um, animation behind the theme song, which is like a music video, was just cool to watch. The, the Japanese singer would sing words and then the characters at one point were mouthing the words, but it was like sections cut out from the series, like just put in per syllable. It was great. It worked out great. That was just one thing that I thought was awesome. It, it starts out with the silhouette of the main character's head, but inside the silhouette is uh, images of the city. I recommend it. Revisions on Netflix. All right. That was your uh, less than 10 minute anime review and my new obsession, which is keeping me from finishing my comic or becoming a famous artist. Disco Jesus, I need your help. Help me, ab help me abstain from my obsessions and turn once again to discipline. House of Discipline. I need the dojo of mojo, Jesus. Give it to me now. Oh. Our affectation candle, St. Expedite, is not here. If he was, I would ask St. Expedite to give it to me now. Do it now, St. Expedite. Expeditiously. Now then, our prayer is done. Let's return to this painting. And hopefully today we can kill it. Make it dead. Make it burn in hell. That is, be finished and out of my face. I don't mind working on a painting all the time and doing it over and over and over again. I mean, it's something to do. But I would really rather finish it and move on. I have a million stories to tell him. I mean, look, I would hardly call this painting done, but it's done. It's going in the dung pile. I'm a little bit obsessed with this painting, though. I want to get it right. Let's peel off that blob. Okay. You can see my paint's not adhering to the gesso. That's weird. Maybe you can't see. Maybe it's too far away. Yeah, you can sort of see that I there's a spot on there now. There was a spot there because I peeled off a blob that I thought looked weird. The trouble is when you have a blob on top of something that's relatively flat, it reflects light on the top edge. So it looks like there's a lighter color there when there isn't. And it, it you know, sometimes it's bizarre. So let's just, dude, I'm just filling it in with black. Skunk man, skunk man, skunk man. Skunk man. Uh, so there's a skunk living inside St. Patrick's. I came into St. Patrick's yesterday and I'm like, who's smoking pot in here? It seems so bizarre. These aren't just your average everyday Catholics. These are your staunch Mexican Catholics at St. Patrick's. You know, as Catholic as your grandmother. And I, I just, who would do that in St. Patrick's? I can't, I can't even imagine. And then the priest says to me, yeah, we have a critter. I think there's a skunk living in the walls. I'm like, skunk, of course. I never thought of skunks smelling like pot, but I guess it's the context. All right, so the light patch that I added is too light, or I should say not bright enough because it, it sort of blends in with that background, so I'm going to make the background darker. This is what I call wrecking it and building it and breaking it. And to do that, I'm going to just, I'm going to just take some of this ivory black that I just mixed up. There we go. Now we're talking turkeys. Maybe I should add some blue. I had a great idea the other day. I was looking at the sky, and in the clouds, there was a kind of purple that was blue tinted and I thought what wait a minute I've never added red or blue to any purple that I've ever mixed I only add white and black why is that and I thought I'm doing it so today is the day thank you cloud for inspiring me adding a little bit of blue I'm adding goddess blue huh well it's a really powerful blue it's like I know and I have to re-add the ultramarine violet to make up for it it's too powerful, Goddess Blue. It's got the power of the goddess. Senora Guadalupe, just coming down. 
just coming down on my blue, coming down hard and saying, no, it's going to be blue, not purple. But Guadalupe, you are wrong. All right, here we go. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. I think that'll work. Let's see what happens. This might be too dark. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there it is. mirror that down here a little bit. So, yeah, 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 that looks a lot better. So you can see that light, I was going to say light is not a function of white, light is not a function of white, but it appears that I have just made it a function of white. It actually isn't, it's a function of saturate, hue saturation. For instance, this looks lighter than this, and in truth, that room is much brighter than this room, at least in my memory. But this room is closer to you, so that one should be darker. And I'm afraid I'm going to have to do that. Um, okay, I'm going to use yellow. I will. I'm going to use yellow ochre because it's a subdued yellow. Subdued. I'll add some violet to it to make it even more subdued. No, no, I'll add this blue to make it green. Ugh. No, I'm making it green. Green, in theory, should make it recede even more. I'm just going to add a dab of green. Goddess blue plus yellow ochre makes earth tone green. This is the kind of green you'd find in a master's painting. All right, add some water. Give it some smearability. And we are. Oh, look at that. Look how dark that is. That is way darker than I had ever anticipated. Theoretically, I shouldn't be paying this much details to the background because it's only the background. It should be not paid attention to. One thing I learned is that in paintings, you put all the detail into the, to the thing you want people to look at, and what they're not supposed to look at, just give sort of give the impression. Uh, that's actually not how I've been handling this painting. This works better. That works better. Now I'm going to add a brighter yellow to what I have on my brush. I'm adding Hansa yellow medium, A, I mean Azo yellow medium, to the ochre that's on my brush to make it brighter for this mark. I'm going to do both ceilings at once. I'm going to make them white with my new magic sauce. Whoops, that's probably too much white. And I'm not going to use my new magic sauce. I'm going to use the dregs of my old magic sauce. Come on, magic sauce. Well, I guess I'm not. I'm going to use the new magic sauce because I'm out of old magic sauce. 
Team Cave Dweller, the magic sauce is what makes your painting awesome because it I've been adding it to this painting a lot to the color white, which is not what it's for. You should add it to a color. You should add it to a color that's transparent. White is the epitome of not transparent. Also known as opaque. Look at that. It's like something that I pulled out of my nose. Magic sauce. The hard part is pouring it into that little hole. I mean, look at the hole disparity. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, baby. These are the mad skills of the Scrouse. When I say mad, I mean angry. Focus. Last thing I want is this magic sauce on my magic pants. Magic pants. Tuxedo pants. Adjustable. I could gain 100 pounds and these pants would still fit. My waist. Maybe not my legs. My legs might get too fat. Oh, I thought I was afraid of that. Okay. Oh, huh. the drums are going across the street. It's time for bad classic rock. Across the street we have a bar called Sports on Sheridan, which is connected to the oldest drive through liquor store in the town. It's so old that if they close it, they'll never reopen. They're only open through great being grandfathered in. Grandfathered in to the permissibility of drive through liquor stores. I think all liquor stores should be drive through. Like literally, you drive through a garage and then you drive through the warehouse, say, I want a case of that. They bring it to your car. There's new business in that. And you can stay socially distant that way too, which is to say antisocial. The government or whomever wants you to be antisocial. This is not the point of the show where I talk about hysteria and beliefs perpetrated by the media. I wish I had a trash can over here. I'm accumulating trash and it's getting in my way. Let's get that. We're almost out of time and I want to get the ceiling done because it, I've almost done nothing today in this painting that I wanted to finish completely before I left you, Cave Dweller. Before I left you, I wanted to give you something to take away. I wanted to, you to give it, I wanted to give you a takeaway on this painting. Oh, my precious Cave Dweller. Here we are. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Like, leave all the comments to your heart's desire. Tell me what you loved, what you want to learn next, and share it with all your pally wallies because, and subscribe. The most important thing is subscribe to the YouTube, YouTube channel. That's the most important because as it is, nobody is even seeing these videos. So if you stumble across it, make sure to subscribe and then we'll climb in the rankings. You and I together, Cape Dweller, and we'll turn painting into a public sport. No, a spectator sport. Here we go, are you ready? See, I'm getting splotches on here because I mixed this color up on a palette that has dried, dried paint. Dried paint comes up. I don't want to, the ceiling to be white. I just want it to be tied together. And as a result, I mixed up this color that was too light. It's too white. I may have to go in and wipe it off. Cave Dweller, this episode of The Scrouse Live has been brought to you by the Prior Street Iron Water Well.
Hydrating Milwaukee since 1895 or somewhere thereabouts. Milwaukee's first and only public well, well, last remaining public well, groundwater. Water from the ground. Water straight out of Hades. Water, the Virgin of Guadalupe, had to bring to earth. Thank you, Disco Jesus, for sharing it with us. E pluribus unum. Fresh as the lips of my mouth. I'm not sure how this is drying. I'm gonna take a plunge and wipe it off. I wiped it off too vigorously. So I've got to put some back on. I just want the background in the background. I don't want it coming forward. I want people to see what they're supposed to look at. This has been my downfall in painting almost all my life. Let's put the legs of this table back in. put the legs of the other table back in and then we're going to call it done team cave dweller thank you for joining me today thank you for being here to the scrouse extravaganza if you know anybody who's interested in talking to me about anime on this show or trying to break it up there's too much of me on this show i would like other people to participate so if you know of any have them give me a call Okay, it's coming together. There's some things that are happening in a way that I like. I'm going to put some writing on his shirt in black. And then he'll have black on black. In fact, I'll give him the logo of the Scrouse Global. Let's do it right now. This is going to be the last thing I'm going to do. This last thing right now. Okay, I'm going to add some blue to this black. Some goddess blue. It's not like you'll even notice. Alright, so the Scrouse Global logo looks like this. lines through it.
All right, black on black t-shirt. I think that adds so much. All right, Team Cave Dweller, this has been awesome, and you've been awesome. And for the last 10 seconds, I'm just going to stare into your face. So you can start counting now. <laughs>